What's up guys, Chris from AndroidPit.com. I'm here with Jeff Gordon from HTC at Mobile World Congress 2015. So Jeff, I guess the first thing to ask you would be about the HTC One M9. What can you tell me about that straight off the bat? What's the reception been like so far? Sure, absolutely. Uh, so we're very excited about the HTC One M9, uh, brand new at the show here. We launched it on Sunday and the response has been fantastic. Um, I think everybody obviously has been waiting for HTC to release our new flagship for 2015. So, uh, so we're super excited about we've, what we've come up with. Uh, basically, um, we took the idea that our last couple of flagships, the uh, HTC One M7 and M8, were extremely well received. And we, want, we wanted to take the, uh, the DNA of those devices fuse them together with the same design language and come up with a, a true refinement of what we believe is the best design phone for the past couple of years. So that's the HTC One M9, um, truly refined in, in, in every uh, way in terms of its industrial design. Then of course we have uh, HTC Sense 7, the latest version of our UX on there, uh, which adds in a whole new level of personalization, uh, localization, and uh, just a, a fresh new experience. So yeah, we're very excited about it and the response has been phenomenal. I guess from my perspective, there's been, I mean, I think everyone's impressed with the device as a whole, but the one thing everyone does seem to keep coming up with is the design. The design hasn't changed very much at all since since the previous flagship, the One M8. And I think it's a given that HTC's design is fantastic, it's very widely respected. Um, but can you tell me a little bit more about why the design has shifted so little between the last year's flagship and the current? Sure, yeah. So I, I think that actually, as I hold the phone up here, um, the, the design has evolved in, in subtle but very important and impactful ways. Um, and, and first thing that I would say in response to feedback about it, you know, quote unquote, not having changed is we're not going to try to fix something that's not broken. It's a beautiful design coming over from that design language of M7 and M8. And we just wanted to refine it in ways that we heard um, feedback from customers that they wanted. So for example, with M8, we heard that uh, it was maybe a little bit slippery in the hand and that kind of thing. And so we took the DNA of M7 that has a little bit more of a ridge around the edge and added that into M9. We also refined the, the material on, on the back and, and the front. Uh, it still has the full uh, metal unibody, but it feels really, really good in your hand. And this is not something that's going to be slipping out of the palm of your hand, so we're very proud of that. We also moved the power button over to the side, which was feedback from a lot of people. It used to be at the top, and having it on the side here uh, is going to be really uh, useful and usable for people, so that's good. Uh, and then, of course, we also added a uh, sapphire glass to cover the, the 20 megapixel camera on the back. Uh, and so, you know, lots of design elements here that are subtle, but very, very important. Now I understand that there were some supposed leaks uh, before our announcement, and people were thinking there might have been some sort of radical design change. And you know, we never comment on leaks and rumors and speculation and that kind of thing. Uh, but uh, you know, I mean, uh, we didn't want to completely throw the baby out with the bathwater, so to speak, uh, to use that expression. We wanted to, to really focus in on what we've done so great for the past couple of years, which is uh, this beautiful design language and just evolve it forward for 2015. I guess um, one of the other things that has changed as well is the removal of the duo camera from the back as well as shifting ultra pixels purely to the front, obviously for low light performance, for selfies, um, but could you tell me a little bit more about the decision making behind putting a regular megapixel camera on the back instead of duo camera and ultra pixels? Sure, absolutely. So we absolutely still believe in the ultra pixel camera uh, as well as the, the duo camera. You know, we're not saying that uh, we're moving away from ultra pixels since obviously we moved it to the front. And, uh, and we're also not completely going away from the duo camera. That's something that we think is a very cool technology. Um, it did really well for us on M8 and, and sparked a lot of people's imaginations. So um, it, the duo camera wasn't right for this particular product. Product, um, but stay tuned. Um, in terms of putting the 20 megapixel camera on, on the M9, we certainly heard a lot of feedback from uh, consumers that um, on M8 they wanted to have bigger photos, they wanted to have uh, larger, higher resolution panoramas, they wanted to do more cropping and that kind of thing. So we heard that feedback and uh, decided to put the 20 megapixel camera on the back. Again, as I mentioned before, protected by sapphire glass, so this is not going to be scratching up or anything like that. It's going to be very well protected. Um, and then where the ultra pixel camera seems to really make a ton of sense is by moving it around to the front where uh, you know you're taking those low light photos in a restaurant or a bar nightclub or something like that with your friends and uh, you can get that uh, that really good um, uh, detail uh, in, in a low light situation with natural skin tones and that kind of thing. So I, I think the front uh, for the ultra pixel makes a ton of sense whereas the back you're taking more of panorama shots and that kind of thing. 
Um, so talking about the Snapdragon 810, of course, we've heard all the rumors about overheating, which by and large, I think are not entirely true, but also thermal throttling. Um, did you want to comment at all on how the M9 performs under under load and in terms of heat dispersal as well? Sure, yeah. So, so first of all, I should say we don't have final software. We're still working on that. Um, so uh, there have already been some preview articles posted and uh, talking about things like uh, the speed, the benchmarks, camera experience, that kind of thing. None of those are running final software, so I just want to be clear about that. However, uh, we're working hard to get final software. Uh, we expect uh, performance is going to be fantastic in terms of heats and how the, the Snapdragon 810 is performing. It's doing great. No concerns about that whatsoever. In fact, uh, the Snapdragon 810 is actually cooler in a lot of respects than the 801 before it, which was obviously very, very widely adopted. So no concerns. We're getting that software uh, finished here in the next uh, few days to a week, a week, uh, a week and a half, something like that. And uh, can't wait to get it in people's hands so they can experience it firsthand. I'd be remiss to to not ask about the smartwatch as well. Uh, any updates on that? Still sort of in quiet development with no real release plans yet? Uh, no updates there. Nothing to announce on smartwatch here at the show. And, and in fact, uh, can't even say if anything is particularly under development. What I will say is on the wearables front, we announced our HTC Grip wearable. It's our first fitness wearable. And we're super excited about that. It's in partnership with Under Armour, one of the top fitness brands in the world. And, uh, and it's an amazing um, wearable that is going to really push you hard when you're out there uh, exercising, uh, you know, training for a race or, or doing some hardcore fitness. So I don't have with, one with me right now, but they're around the show floor and people have been responding really well to it. So we're excited about the grip. Uh, you've said to me in the past that HTC is not particularly interested in Me Too products, uh, like with the smartwatch, not to, just to bring out another one just so you have one on the market. So I guess with, with the HTC grip, another fitness tracker. Uh, can you tell me what you think distinguishes it from the other fitness trackers already available? Sure, definitely. Um, so one of the main things is how we're positioning it on the market because uh, we really want to go after uh, true athletes with this product. There's a lot of fitness wearables out there that are geared more towards uh, the folks who are just trying to get off the couch and get a few extra steps in the day and that kind of thing. Uh, and in fact, that's a pretty crowded part of the, the wearable market. And so we decided to take the other uh, direction and go for people who are, are really exercising a lot. You know, they work out maybe uh, four or five, even you know, six or seven times a week, and they're really pushing themselves hard. Uh, for these people, um, the experience with the HTC Grip and also Under Armour's uh, UA Record application is really beneficial because you can you can really push yourself hard with this app. It tracks a ton of data, it analyzes it for you. You can compare yourself to professional athletes and kind of follow them with their workout regimens. So it, it really is inspiring for somebody who is more into exercise than simply just trying to get off the couch. So there's that kind of positioning angle and how it integrates with the UA Record app. But also from a technical standpoint, the sensors that we've built into the HEC Grip, not the least of which is the GPS, is something that we think is really, really valuable. So using that GPS when you're going for a long run and being able to, to, to really closely track where you are and uh, you know the calories that you're burning and that kind of thing, I think is going to be really uh, a differentiator for us. So excited about it. It's going to be coming out later on this spring, and I think that it's going to make a splash as uh, one of the, the, the highest end and most athlete-oriented fitness trackers out there. I guess speaking of partnerships as well, we now have the partnership with Valve uh, on the on the Vive. Um, did you want to tell me a little bit about VR and I guess HTC's planning in that regard? It's not something I guess most of us would have traditionally expected from HTC. Yeah, actually, uh, I, I tweeted out a little while ago about my excitement around some uh, some unknown things that HTC had, uh, and this is one of those things in particular. Uh, we're so stoked about this. Um, the partnership with Valve is something that we've been working on for a, a while and, and playing around with the idea of virtual reality. So we feel like this is definitely a future opportunity for us. And so, um, so, so Valve has been working on their Steam VR software platform for some time, and they came to us uh, wanting to, to look for a hardware partner. Uh, they know that HTC is one of the best partners in the business and creates some of the best hardware. And so, um, and so we've been working on this with them, and I believe the experience with the HTC Vive uh, VR headset is really one of the most mind-blowing things that HTC has ever has ever worked on. Um, we announced the developer kits on Sunday here at MWC, and we're actually at the GDC uh, conference in San Francisco, the, game, the Games Developers Conference, uh, showing it off to developers because we're really trying to rally devs around creating 
cool uh, games and software experiences for this. And uh, when the device comes out uh, by uh, holiday season 2015, we hope there's going to be a tremendous software offering for it. And people uh, will buy the consumer version of this and have some amazing games and other software to play. So can't wait to show people demos of it. I'd love to get you in. I think we've got one scheduled for you later on this week that you'll be able to share with your readers and viewers. And believe me, this is one of the coolest things HTC has ever done. Absolutely, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm just hoping I don't look too goofy, uh, of course, when I when I strap it on. Um, I guess one other thing about the Vive is I'm interested that, of course, the, the obvious omission from its launch is that it's not paired to an HTC device or a phone, I guess, like other virtual reality headsets. Um, any, any comment on that? Yeah, sure. Um, so it is a PC-based solution, and um, the decision around that is that we wanted our virtual reality solution to be extremely high-end, extremely realistic. In fact, uh, the head-mounted display has 70 different sensors on it, so for tracking your movements and being able to allow you to get up out of your seat and walk around a room and have that full room-scale virtual reality experience, it requires a lot of heavy processing. Um, it requires a, a, a lot of um, offloading of the experience into the PC, into the graphics card, and, and so forth. And so, um, you know, doing this on the phone just isn't something that's a reality right now. So, uh, you know, it's geared more towards the, 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 the gamer or the person who has a high-end PC at home. And uh, I think that's uh, definitely going to resonate well with those people. Uh, you know, it's, honestly, it's not going to be something that uh, is going to be an impulse buy at the store. It's going to be high-end, and, uh, and that's the way we want it to be right now because it's going to be the most incredible VR solution on the market when it comes out later this year. All right, Jeff, thank you very much for your time. Have a great MWC, and we're looking forward to everything else HTC has and some more big surprises for later in the year. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Pleasure.